Yo, what's up, everybody? I am Thomas Dopaziola, whatever you want to call me. I am here with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, folks? What's up, guys? This is the Dope As Usual podcast. We're here to talk about life, drugs, problems, accomplishments, and everything in between. Today, today's podcast, I've had mo- since, you know what? Let's just get into it. All right, let's Please. just get into it. Guys, this is a guest we are very excited to have. This is Lena The Plug. Hi, everybody. You say it right? Yes, you said it correctly. Okay, I'm very honored to be here in your first time with your new yes setup thank first you. guest new setup looking good I'm, I'm excited thank you for being here yeah of course you i think might be the only guest that showed up directly on time thank you for i that. was all sad because i was like four minutes late <laughs> no that's perfect yes. time thank so you do you guys that. like leave a bunch of room in your schedule because most people are like what half an hour late or something we tend to just we give hope. a little bit of leeway just hope yeah we just hope because we don't want to go, hey where are you yeah hurry no we're never gonna do that mm-hmm. but it's nice but like on time let's get no i felt bad i was like i'm four minutes late. i hate being late to stuff yeah me too i, don't I like will it. go on super sport mode and smash <laughs> if i have to get somewhere Oof. it's the worst that's the worst that's the worst feeling on earth rushing being somewhere yeah podcast or some shit. so speaking of podcasts i i mean i follow your pages i follow adam's pages pages you have a lot of shows you work a lot uh i, I do i guess you do i mean i we have one i and have it's a lot well, of work mm-hmm. We have Plug Talk, and I've been on No Jumper a lot, but it's not my show. I feel like a lot of people used to think it was my podcast, too. And then now, um, I just launched my podcast yesterday, That's, but I like still feel weird saying that I have a podcast because it's so new. Well, I feel like this other being a part of a show, I feel like you say, no, it's my show. But no, it's our show. You're on the plug talk. That's a full. T- that's a job in itself. Yeah, we try not to shoot it too often, so we don't like get sick of it. Because it's like when you do it once a week, it's like really exciting, you know. But mm-hmm. we'll do like multiple episodes a yeah. day. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a lot of work. A lot of rounds. Yeah, that's a lot. Touch up makeup in between. Wash your body. Well, you have a Go whole. Again. You have a whole production with you. Um, doing it. We have a crew of like two to three people: audio guy, filmer. Um, you know, production manager, set manager, um, and then the talent that come in. But really, like the whole episode from start to finish, from like filling out paperwork to the end, takes like two hours. Filling maybe. out paperwork, like NDAs or something. No, like if you know, there's like um, paperwork that you have to do by law when oh, you're in porn, gotcha. like to make sure the person's 18 and make sure they consent to like some model release, basically. Gotcha. And you take photos of the IDs and all that kind of oh. boring stuff. Yeah, yeah. The stuff that nobody cares about. Or I sees. mean, well, it's like because we're having sex on the podcast, so you have to like make sure everything is. I mean, what, in I mean, order. I just want to think it's a great business model. I think it's the <laughs> best because that's literally what you do. Do you want to accelerate your brand a little? Let's all do it together. That's how well, I see it. Every time I go on someone else's podcast, now the joke is like, oh, I wonder what they're going to do at the end of the podcast. We're not going to have sex on this podcast. <laughs> but on my oh. podcast, that's what Adam and I do. We yeah, have sex with the, with the talent. Day. Well, the comments would have <laughs> said. Because now well, I started my own podcast and I've already seen some comments like, how is this one going to end? I wonder if they'll have but sex this again. is just for, this is your show. This is everything you, because Plug Dog, I get it. No Jumper, I get it. I understand those yeah. aren't like something like, this is mine. I created it. Yeah, well, because it's like, I oh I mean even though I have a large male audience I do have a large female audience that I For feel sure. like I connect to a little bit more and I've always wanted to be able to be myself and so my podcast is more like the questions that girls would probably want to ask other mm-hmm. girls in the adult industry like when the girls are telling their stories on Plug Talk I want to ask questions and I really hold back because it's going to take the show to a very unsexy place and the whole point of the show is for people to be masturbating and you know, going to completion. And if I ask a question about like- Your dad, like, how was your dad? <laughs> you know, or like, uh, how did that make you feel on set? Like, what did that do for you when the director said that? Like, it's just, you know, emotionally, like it's just, people are gonna get really uh. soft real fast and <laughs> X out. So Touchy Subject, which is my podcast, is where, where I can, you know, ask those questions that I really, really wanna itch to ask. Of course, but when, I, when we were thinking of questions, cause you said there's a, another perspective. I know a lot of, you have a girl audience. Yes. When we're doing the question, I'm like, you know what? I don't have a girl's perspective of this. I need a girl's mm. perspective of what questions that a girl would ask. Yeah. So that's exactly what yes, you do. You exactly. fill in that void of, yo, I had a, oh, I'm not going to talk about that here. So well, yeah, I really am like a little, a little mute sometimes on plug talk. Cause I'm like, 
I don't know. The questions are very like, how was your first anal sometimes, you know? And it's yeah. like, I don't care as much about that question as I do about the other things. Yeah. So you've had one episode so far. I filmed a few, oh, but I've dropped you, one. No, I had to. So I wouldn't stress myself out. So you're filming multiples a day? On this um, I'm show? actually, Adam is doing my podcast tomorrow, which when I first started was starting it, he said, I'm not going to be on your podcast. I'll be on like episode 20. Like I want you to like do your podcast do your thing. On, your, mm-hmm. on your own. And then he was like, actually, I'll be on your podcast. I really want to talk about our vacation. <laughs> okay. Oh, so now he has an outlet to go. Oh, the, the way I always see it because he's in such a culture that dudes don't want to smile. Like dudes all stand like this chain or money. It's like, it's cool to be in another environment. Like, yeah. I could be a dad. Looks like this Disney picture. Like, that's how I, I feel. I think for him too is outlet. like he can't live any part of his life without it actually becoming content. And he's like going to Vegas, so he's like, I'm not going to have an opportunity to talk about this vacation on my podcast. So mm-hmm. I'll do it on your podcast. I'm like, okay, um, but it's funny because my podcast set is like very girly and very pink. I and, saw it, and like I am very excited to see him <laughs> sitting in the podcast chair. <laughs> It's, it's like his adventures way. channel. It's like his yes, clean cut I have another channel. channel where I don't smoke weed or don't cuss or don't do anything that would get you flagged. Uh-huh. And it feels like, uh, <laughs> I, feel, uh, I feel different. Yeah. But I'm sure with him too, uh-huh. it's an outlet for him because you're saying his whole life's content. I, I feel and understand that mm-hmm. struggle slash opportunity. Yeah. I get it. He's like, I did all this. I didn't do anything with it. I see Did what he's really saying. do it if he didn't tell everyone about it. Well, that and more of, yeah. I can write this off, this whole vacation to my CPA, yeah. parts of it, if I just film it. That's how I feel a lot of the time. That's true. Yeah. Whose idea was Plug Talk? This has got to be the first of its, the first podcast of its kind, right? Mm, so, how did, I mean, it came about, like, we started working on it during quarantine. I, I When I was pregnant, we kind of saw how like a lot of people started to do sexy content but it wasn't quite porn like i don't know if you guys know vitaly here at that site vitaly uncensored where because he was on youtube yeah the prank guy so he was doing like pranks on a website and they would just like have titties out or whatever it wasn't like sex sex it was just like a little bit of nudity and we saw that and we were like kind of like what's our version of that and we were like well why don't we do a podcast that's like adam's Mm. thing and then the porn thing's like my thing and just blend our two ideas together so we actually were sitting on episodes for like a year and then we finally dropped last november and it's weird because i was like really pregnant in the first few episodes and then when we finally released i like wasn't pregnant anymore so everyone's like what the fuck is she she pregnant again and it's like no 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 no. these episodes are kind of old um yeah so then it took a while because i like you know it's not really easy to find a place to shoot porn so i was like i bought a separate house so that we can actually shoot plug talk there so we have our own studio but it's a house so now we just crank out episodes like once or twice a week wow that's i mean the concept of it is i do you remember there was like the taboo shit you you have a playboy tv channel at your house you're rich remember those kids like i have it at my house (laughs) it was like the taboo crazy thing remember like (laughs) e-bombs world and rotten.com all that crazy shit so when people introduced me that i'm like there's a playboy channel on tv and these porn girls and models would talk about sex scenes on the show and have wow. call-ins of people live talking. So this one scene in, in this one in this one episode, she's like, oh, gotcha. So this is really what happened. She tells wow, a story. Wow, I didn't know about that. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, my friend, sorry, Anthony, me and my friend Anthony <laughs> Avila, he turned around and I go, You're, he's like, my mom's out of town. I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> like, also, I'm only like 11. So I felt yeah. like, you could have not look. I'm gonna go to hell, bro. Because oh. <laughs> I was a kid, and yeah. you know, people, you better not close your eyes. Any sex scenes, close your fucking eyes. Look that way. I know. So when Playboy TV, it shocked the mm. hell out of me. So I feel like your guys' show is like an updated version of that minus the craziness, except you found a way to monetize the adult film end. Yeah. And I think it's awesome. It just makes it different, too, because it's like, I feel like, I mean, now more and more girls are getting to go on podcasts, but for the most part, the average girl who's in the industry probably doesn't have like a platform to talk about herself Mm -hmm. on. And she probably has really interesting stories. Some of the girls that are lesser known that we've had on Plug Talk have had the most interesting stories. And I'm just like, God, I could hear her talk forever. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that aspect is really fun for girls. They get to come and share about themselves and then they get like a scene out of it, you know, because like we have the scene on the Plug Talk OnlyFans, but we also give it to the girl. So she's free to sell it herself Uh. and so it's still content trade which i like like as a model that's the kind of 
like business offer that I would want someone to give me because that's the way that I can make the most money off of my content. So Mm -hmm. it feels really good to be doing it that way versus like a company, they just pay you a flat rate. You're there all day. And and they exploit it forever. forever. And then they sell it forever and Mm -hmm. you just got your one day's pay, you know? Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I could see the incentive if somebody wanted to come on on top of the exposure. Now you're getting, like you said, work out of it. Yeah. And it is work. It's sex work. It's it's an actual job. It's It's an actual job. We pay actual taxes. It's a real career. No, it's (laughs) real. Yeah. So question, you said during quarantine, you thought about it. I noticed I've seen the OnlyFans stuff. At first, I just thought it was memes of, you know, OnlyFans. And then I saw the logos. You know how things catch up. What is this? I've seen it 13 times today. Yeah. So when I saw OnlyFans, I thought, is this good or bad for the adult industry? But in terms of corporate stuff, individually, I think it's great, Mm -hmm. correct? Because now people have a platform to... Get it out to the masses, I guess, it was more. And at first, it was more taboo. And now I see it as, what do you do? Oh, I, I do OnlyFans as yeah. a straightforward, like, that's just my job. Yeah. Just like, oh, well, I'm an adult, I'm a, it's a like dancer. It's like a recording artist almost. Like, I don't need the label as much. Mm-hmm. That's how exactly. I'm feeling, yes. Yeah, so and it, feel? it's like, there's there's I think it's great for everyone. I mean, it was not great for the porn studios because mm-hmm. there's like a little bit of less incentive for girls to want to work for them because if they can get their own exposure on social media through collaborating with other girls or purchasing shout outs or whatever it is, then they don't really need the studio. And, you know, they they make all of their money. On the other hand, they also have to like work like a true businesswoman. They have to plan all their shoots and make sure they're catering to their audience and answering all their messages and all those things. And if you're not the type of person who wants to do that stuff, it's not going to be good for you. If you want to just show up to set and be treated like, you know, talent, like a princess and they cater to you, they do your makeup, everything, then that's great for you. But, um, with the pandemic, you know, obviously a lot of people didn't have jobs. They were losing their jobs. So a lot of people went to OnlyFans, And so it just became such a big name, which I think is great. Cause when I walk into a bank and the accountant pulls up my account, you know, they're always like, so what do you do for a living? And I'm like, Oh my God, they're asking me this question again. And last time I went to the bank, I was just like only fans. And the guy didn't ask me anything else. And I was like, yep. great. Like my job is sort of legitimized by the fact that everybody's aware of this, what this thing is. Mm-hmm. And so I don't really have to explain myself that much anymore it's versus before now. it's like well i'm a youtuber and actually i really make most of my money from creating adult content online so you're a porn mm-hmm. star well i don't really work for any company you know it's like mm-hmm. it was like a whole thing only fans became normal in like two years it's normal yeah, yeah. like a hundred percent like like what zoom did to skype but mm-hmm. it there just wasn't anything there before it now only fans just part of like the zeitgeist it did what about. uber did to taxis yeah yeah. Like allowed yeah. you to be your own boss. I mean, girls still shoot for companies and, and all the companies are still very popular, of course. But if uh, if a girl has her own ex- exposure from, you know, creating an Instagram or TikTok or whatever, then she could really just make an OnlyFans herself. All you really need to be successful on OnlyFans is to have an audience. And then you can probably go get paid more when you book commercial shoots if you have. Yeah, because then you can, um, Bring you know, audience. put more pressure on, on the rate they're going to give you. Because obviously if you don't have any following, then... They can just give you a low volume on the rate, but yeah. Yeah, and it's not just, oh, you can go, why don't you just get a regular, I hear that a lot, get a regular job. It's not a regular job's pay. I ha- I know one person that, I'm not going to say everything, you know her too. <laughs> she makes, I mean, six figure, mid six figures a month. Yeah. A month. That is amazing. Selling farts and shit or what? So <laughs> no, you don't even have to do all that. <laughs> she had to do none I mean, of that. some just, girls just take like nude photos following. and mm-hmm. some girls do the whole thing, you know? But to put it in perspective, like I started doing adult content online before OnlyFans even existed. So it was 2016. And back then it was like private Snapchat was the thing. So basically- you would ask me if I had a private Snapchat and I would send you to my website I never and you knew. would like Snapchat was used for porn back in the day. Yes, but it was like it was called through private snap. third party app. So it wasn't that. like officially through Snapchat. Okay. You would basically pay 30 bucks a month to be my friend on Snapchat. And then I would add you gotcha. and then you'd get to see my story and my story would have nudity on it. And back then, you know, I had maybe I would say between 25 and 50,000 followers on Instagram. And my first month I decided to do it, I made just over $30,000. So, and that's like me being a very small creator Mm -hmm. back then. So it's like, there is a lot of money in it. And OnlyFans only made it easier to make money because there's just so many different ways you can monetize Mm -hmm. on the actual platform. Was it hard adjusting to YouTube comments or just like, you have a whole different type of people watching you now or like critiquing you on YouTube? (sighs) 
Well, so I wasn't like going to pursue YouTube really. And then I met Adam and Adam is like, he comes from the YouTube space. And he's like, gotta make YouTube, YouTube channel. Like look at hot girls do so good on YouTube. You know, he was kind of trying to be like my manager a little bit. And, uh, so I just made a video. It was maybe like two minutes. I didn't really try at all. I just sat there and I was like, okay, if I get a million subs, I'm going to make a sex tape. And it was just like a joke. Cause I had seen another girl try to make the same comment and she did not get a million subs. It didn't become this viral thing. Mm -hmm. but when I did it, it went super viral. Like World Star was the first one to post it. And then everyone picked it up after that. It was on like the Yahoo home front page. Like oh, wow. I did like random radio shows in like South Africa. Like it was so fucking viral. And when that happened, it was like, I didn't get to dip my toe into being an influencer or being famous or whatever. It just like really happened all at once. And obviously the story is like, girl so desperate she says she'll make a sex tape if she hits a million subscribers mm -hmm. which like now in the only fans era i don't think that's even a story i don't think that no. story goes viral i don't think it's a big deal at all you no. have to say the craziest mm -hmm. shit you have to say like you fucked your cousin on only fans mm -hmm. in order to become <laughs> really popular or make like a big viral splash right but back in 2016 i think it was like january 2017 that this happened I got so much hate. Like people were saying that I was like this crazy desperate loser. And I really sat there like, holy shit, should I have done this? Like people are looking at me in such a terrible way. Like it kind of made me a little depressed, but then I had Adam who, who was like, okay, this is, this is all just good. Like, don't worry about it. And obviously it, it did make me a lot more money. It did make me a lot more famous. And I think that story is like what has allowed me to have longevity because I don't think that OnlyFans, the people who make the most money on OnlyFans are the prettiest people. They're not like, yeah, being attractive helps, but it's really like the story and mm -hmm. the thing that makes you go viral, that makes you popular and that makes you the most money. Yeah. You can remember these, like when you just said, and it was private now, like, wow, I forgot that was a huge wave. Yeah. It was before Lincoln bio OnlyFans, Lincoln, before all yeah. these little trends started. So I, it's so like I said, when pandemic started, I have a lot of model friends that started doing OnlyFans uh -huh. and now they're, they're crushing it. And I yeah. think it's, I think it's great. It's a, it's a way to monetize yourself. If you are already doing modeling, you're already yeah. doing this. You're already you taking say, near nude photos, right? Like on your page, you're already taking exactly. bikini pictures. Exactly. And, and then the thing that people always say, oh, who's paying for that? What guy's really paying for that? There are so many dudes out there that are just so busy and or lonely or just straight up cannot talk to girls. I mean, some people just buy it out of curiosity. Like oh, if you tell a ridiculous story, then people just want to know a little bit more about you. They're really curious. Like what is she actually posting on her page? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. People just really like, they, they say in the comments like, oh, that's so gross. That's so nasty. I would never want to be with someone like this, but then all these group of people come in to subscribe, you know? So there's something for everyone. Like, the um i just was on flagrant and i was just saying how i think it's like gross that people ask me to talk about like mommy stuff on my page because i'm a mom now so everyone's like really into the milf thing with me oh, on the only fans yeah like, they're like oh, oh like tell me all about your mommy milkers and stuff like that and like i was saying how i didn't like that and uh flagrant posted about it and that like did really well for my only fans. <laughs> oh so my it's God. like you, you just never know can you put on your page like please no like f like mommy shit please don't your, be a creep yeah like does OnlyFans have like any like? There's tons of rules. Okay. There's de there's definitely things you can and can't say. Um, I remember the first thing I was shocked by. It was like 2018, and I went to type like choke. You know, it's a really common thing to say like, oh, I want to choke on his dick or whatever. It's like that is not a word you're allowed to Come type. On. It it's it doesn't let you. You can't even say the word. No, <laughs> there's like a lot of rules. Um, because they don't want people fucking choking themselves dead on OnlyFans. I would imagine. I guess there's like a, just so many things you're not allowed to type. And especially now, like the rules have become so much more strict because the credit card companies will basically go back and forth with the porn companies. Like we're not going to let you use our credit card processing if you allow this and this and this and this. So like, like no sponsor. poop, no pee, like no. Like sponsor thing. Gotcha. Kind of, okay. Yeah. I understand. Because they rely on the, on the billing systems, you yeah. know, to be successful. Is crypto big for like porn actors and actresses do you guys get paid like that or not so much i don't know if you can use i don't think you can buy stuff on OnlyFans with crypto maybe I'm not sure i mean i think if the credit card companies decided like no we're not allowing you to use our processors mm. anymore then probably we would have to like really get into crypto 
But OnlyFans probably isn't going anywhere. Like that's what they signed that's up exactly for. That's exactly right? what my next question was. I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, I, I think it's still up in the air if they decide to take adult off their platform. And I think it would really take adult off like well, adult last content. August they said that they were no longer gonna allow adult content on their platform and it was like a certain date that you had to have everything removed by or whatever, and everyone was freaking out. Um, I was really worried and like there was a lot of um People are really upset because it's like the reason the platform is big is because of adult creators. That's the whole point. And then now you have like traditional, more, um, you know, mainstream influencers on the platform who get to use it and get to post the links in their bios and everything like that. And they don't get like in trouble for that sort of thing. But use so, Patreon. Yeah, exactly. Use Patreon. <laughs> but it's, it's you know, the thing is like a lot more people know what OnlyFans is than what Patreon 100%. is. So it's okay. like if there was a new platform tomorrow that had offered the same exact things as OnlyFans, I would still choose OnlyFans because people trust it. People know what it is. And so because I remember back with, with private Snapchat, people would always be like, are you just going to steal my money? Yeah, is what is it going to stay on my statement? Mm -hmm. Is my is like my wife going to see the whatever? Oh. So it's like people really want to trust what they're buying. And with OnlyFans, they feel yeah. like they can trust it. What a question. Will my wife see? Oh, but you probably have the craziest yeah. stuff in your DMs and messages. I, I don't really, I try not to look anymore. You probably have oh. just such they're a exhausting. different perspective on men in general. Well, that, that was another question. I when, <laughs> we, when we booked, when we talked to your manager, I thought, you know what? I have a question. I'm going to help a lot of motherfuckers out there. And I thought, you know what my segment's called? Help a motherfucker out. <laughs> you know how I know. I would say 97% of guys cannot talk to girls. Uh -huh. I would say maybe even higher percentage than that. He, you're a jerk. He's yeah, great. No, he's crushes it. He's amazing with yeah. that. But he's, I'm like, so what would your advice be to a regular, all right, ready? Regular looking guy, not super attractive dude, uh -huh. doesn't get a bunch of money. Grew but up on like, the internet texting but a great, and shit. But a super nice person, super funny. How is he going to go talk to a girl at a bar? Like, what is the thing that's going to make you go, you know what? Didn't creep me out. This guy's interesting. Because there's a lot of dudes out there that have no idea what they're doing. Can't talk uh -huh. to a girl. It's so hard to give, like, a blanket piece of advice because I feel like most girls would agree that, like, one guy could come up to a girl and say, like, hey, you look really beautiful. And, and they'll be like, that guy was such a creep. But then another guy <laughs> could go up to the same girl and it's say this same exact yeah. thing. It's like some of it is intangible. Like, when you can smell the thirst on a guy – it really turns every girl off. And mm -hmm. a, it, it's not something that you can like physically always see, but yeah. it's just you like a vibe. You can't even teach it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so it's like, don't be, don't seem overly thirsty. Don't seem like you never get girls, you know? Yeah. And and you just have to try. Like if you go up to a girl and you're like, like make eye contact, don't be awkward, don't be weird. Just look at her. If she turns you down, you're just a, you know, the same place you started. You didn't have her to begin uh -huh. with. It's not like you got her and lost oh, her. Didn't yeah. have you know what I mean? With. It's like, Mm -hmm. Hey, I think you're really, you're really I, pretty. Can I buy you a drink? Yeah. Can I talk to you for a second? But like, not in a weird way. But like, hey, can I holler at you? Don't be like that. You know, just be like forward. It's so and gross. It's never not gross, <sighs> unless you're just a super G. I was unless just in New York City, walking around the streets, and I forgot that like people just cat call like crazy. I don't really walk around in LA. Like, oh yes. you know, I drive <laughs> everywhere. So I'm walking around in LA, and I'm by myself, and I'm wearing like you know, kind of a workout outfit. Like you know, if you want to say it's sexy, it's sexy, whatever. But I'm just like by myself, like. Hey girl, hey, 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 psst, psst. And I'm like, has psst so and ever has worked for anybody? Psst. Has that ever worked on anyone? Psst, psst. It must. Psst. Could like, you imagine hearing that? It's people so in New York will just come up to you and start talking to you anyway. Like everybody's- Oh, well, he's there's from so New York. Many people. So it's and different. We were, I was like walking around near like Central Park and stuff. And you know, there's just so many more people. So it's bound to happen more. And I was like, obviously when I was walking with Adam, it didn't happen. And then I was like not. by myself one day walking Space around and I was guy. like, Oh my God, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole so weird. different vibe. <laughs> yes. So that, that was my question. Like, what is the state? But you said there's not really a way to put a blanket answer mm -hmm. on that. It's I feel like just being your being yourself, you know, so cliche to say, but, but it's like true. don't seem creep, thirsty. Yeah. Don't seem like you really want it so much, you know, but like, if you if that's the the area in your life that you're trying to pick, pick up girls, which is at the bar, which I don't feel like is like necessarily the best place. Like yeah. I feel like no. maybe at like not the gym is hard too because it's like a lot of girls don't want to be talked to at the gym at all. Yeah. They're like that's they're the like they don't have their makeup on. They just want to do their thing. Guys always try to come over and mansplain like how to use oh, machines and shit. So that's kind of tough. But like maybe if you're like in a workout 
class somewhere where it you're has like to be all like an in a organic collective place meeting where yeah. you're not trying to meet the person or like a yeah. friend of a friend. But also if you meet someone in a place where it's like, let's say you're like interested in yoga or you're interested in golf or whatever it is, mm-hmm. like then you'll find someone somewhere that w- where maybe they have a similar interest with you. So like then you're kind of like already weeding out mm-hmm. some people, you know, like. So it's all so, about your presence. And a, and a lot of dudes are like, I don't want to. I'm going to go to a bar and hang out with a girl. Oh, you know what? She ended up sucking. But you went to a bar. Yeah. You went to a fucking bar. Not everybody that drinks is bad, but go to the, like you said, go to the golf course. Mm. Go something you like. And, and, and I feel like kind of weird answering these sort of questions because I obviously I've been off the market for like six years and I feel like I don't know how to play the game so much anymore. <laughs> yeah. just, um, in general, like if some man, you're not going to be like, you know what? Take my number. You're not going to do that anyway. Yeah, no. But if a dude came up, like, get the fuck away from me versus... Yeah. I'm actually, I'm, I'm with somebody. I mean, I've given difference. my number to dudes like on the street before who will come up to me in a very nice approachable way and like ask me a question and just been really honest. Like, Hey, you caught my attention. You're really beautiful. I'd really like to take you out for a drink sometime. Can I have your number? Like, okay. You know, that was good. Here's my you number. Have wild confidence to do that. You yeah. And he, just he was really good looking, but then after I gave him my number, he immediately started texting me really weird serial killer type shit. And I was like, okay, blocked. But I thought I had, <laughs> I thought I had my senses on right that day, but no. no. Being a girl, not for me. <laughs> I told Rosie all the Can time. Do it? Oh my God. Oh, it would suck. On. I told Rosie, I was, uh, I was at, I'm not going to say exactly where, cause what if I was at a place and this lady, I, I don't even think I told you this lady was, she's nice. She's a nice lady. I'm not a little kid, but I'm also not super old. She was about 55, 60, super nice lady, pretty lady. She would not stop making me feel uncomfortable. (laughs) She made me feel so uncomfortable. And I brought it, yo, my wife, like 16 times just and didn't stop. That didn't, that didn't stop anything. Like oh yeah, <laughs> I kept touching me. Like, ah, you, you, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just a, a out of shape guy. That doesn't happen often. Imagine being a pretty girl uh-huh. and walking to the car. Every like, dude, this, like is at a, all times, is a threat. Yeah, I know. I have a, every do you feel like she was threat, hitting so. on you because you're heavier, and she thought like, oh, he has to want me. Like, do you think that she was she was doing some shit like that to you, or like uh, he know. must well have a fantasy about older women or something? No, I she mean, she's just shooting her shot. I think, like, lady, I, mean, I, I mean, people are nice to like, lady, girls are nice to me all the time because probably because I'm very nice, but she was being really aggressive. But she was being aggressive. I was like, oh, shit. so now you feel Couple like I have these. to take my girl with me everywhere I go. No, I always explain, but hey, no, thank you. I said, why 30 times? But it usually probably works. How many dudes are not, if you got an aggressive woman coming at you, are like, oh, she probably out. felt like terrible after, like, that didn't work. I'm yeah. getting older. She must have thought, she I would have hurt up her feelings. 10. Usually she gets to two and the dude's a go. You don't want to hurt people's feelings. You're like, no, stop. Get, like, you don't want to hurt. Oh, I'll hurt some feelings. I don't care. But to an older lady, dudes I are couldn't insane. Do that to her. Yeah, I Dudes mean, go yeah. crazy, though, because you're in the situation where this dude's like hitting on you. You're just scared. And if you like, if then it, like you disrespect him or something, you might go psychotic. Oh yeah, I remember um, when Adam had his shop on Melrose. I was like, it was kind of hard to park there, and I would always like drive around looking for parking. Oh, yeah. And some guy was straight up just following me in his car, trying to holler at me. And I'm like, you're following me. Like, what makes you think <laughs> that, that I'm gonna to actually want to to be with you? You're scaring me. Yeah, you know, you scare <laughs> me. I'm scared right now. And then it's like when you're like, hey, leave me alone. They're like, fuck you, bitch. And you're like, Jesus. <laughs> but then again, I think it's just the type of dude because uh-huh. I yeah. could never see a situation where I go. Oh, you don't like me? Fuck you. I yeah. would never, like, yeah. in my soul, mm-hmm. like, it's not there. Mm-hmm. And plus, he, his daughter just turned 14. Mm-hmm. So he's all like, so what do you think about this? Like, oh, what do you do about guys doing this? All right, I'm going to talk to her. Uh-huh. So he's, like, on the hunt of, like, get the fuck yeah, out of my Yeah. And it does start happening at that age, like, where guys are just, like, they don't they don't know how old you are. And they're just going to start. Like, because I would walk um, to middle school and high school and stuff. And I, yeah, that's when school. it started happening. Yeah. It's like, hey. Or like whisper on the street. You're like, I'm just trying to go to class. I'm like in the seventh grade. Yeah. It always changes my opinion on a dude when I like, you know, she looks young. Oh, you don't look that young. We're not good friends anymore. Yeah. I don't know if I can hang out with you anymore. If you can't figure out how old she might be. Just off limits. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. (laughs) But I feel like, I feel like it's, I don't know. I mean, if you, if you just look at someone, maybe you can't tell, but like I was getting my nails done yesterday and I just knew the girls next to me were in high school. I could just tell from like the first sentence they said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the way the girls were talking to each other. I was like, they're young. Like they're kids. They're young. You know, Mm -hmm. it's kind of usually easy to tell if you really pay attention. I think if you're not a creep, it's easy to tell. If you don't care, then it's not. If you don't give a shit and you and you would have said it anyway, 
<laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't matter. Uh-huh. People are creepy. Um, so I have a question. I know we went on a far tangent. You said right when you pulled up, oh, I grew up around here. Mm-hmm. You grew up, so Burbank area, where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? Oh, I, I lived in Glendale, like the south of Glendale my whole life. Um, went to Glendale High. So like, you know, I know, I know that this is the area of the world that I know like better than anywhere else. Obviously, like very heavy Armenian proud population, pretty conservative population. Um it's like my family is not that like traditional in their beliefs. You know, it's not like I, w- I wasn't the the girl that was never allowed to go to a sleepover or never allowed to leave her house and stuff okay. like that. But when my before my parents divorced and my dad still lived with us, like, you know, I, I wasn't allowed to watch MTV even like what age is this? Um, I think they stopped living together when I was like in middle school, seventh or eighth grade. But like if I was watching I always give the example of Boy Meets World because I just have like a million memories of watching that show. But I was always like, okay, Corey and Topanga, please don't kiss in this episode. Please, please. Because oh, if my dad sees that they kiss, then I'm going to be in trouble yeah. and like I'm not going to be allowed to watch TV anymore. So like I would always get excited when I would go to my cousin's house because they had the show that had Degrassi, the channel that had Degrassi. And I was like, yes, I'm watch it here. <laughs> oh, you so know, but sheltered. just like very, That's I don't want to say like though. super sheltered, but like. Your we parents just, cared. Yeah, they like especially with like <laughs> sex and like boyfriends and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know. Are you an only child? No, I was the oldest child. But my sister's only like a year younger than me. It's just the two of oh, us. Oh, so if you have two pretty daughters, yeah. of course he's going to be like, no, don't be watching Boy Meets World. It's a weird thing because it's like regular music. This is the sexed out rap. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to be some dad that you have to hide what music you like in front of me. But yeah. also it's weird to, to listen this. to it yeah and you know what the words really mean yeah. and you don't think she really does like she might understand a little bit of Makes it Makes you feel old real quick yeah yeah either you know way it's saying? awkward yeah like it's not cool I or like, like it. now with tiktok it's like now they're dancing to it on tiktok TikTok's they're like weird. do you know what that TikTok's even says weird. yeah uh euphoria ruined euphoria ruined youth <laughs> i watched it the other day and went no you'd never seen it before i watched for the first time i watched about a month ago and the first episode i thought if i was 15 year old girl mm-hmm. My whole thought process yeah. is now ruined. When you said that, I was like, you're fucking And then right. I went, is your daughter watching? Yes. I'm like, I don't know if I'd let her watch this one, man. It gets a little yeah. wild. It makes drug use slightly glorified because I was doing heavy drugs in high school mm. without that show. Well, you were you, in a fucking drug zone. That's though. different. I, okay. Yes. <laughs> but I, I feel that. like it's like different because I had the opportunity to do drugs in high school. Like, you know, the rave scene had started like around my junior, senior, senior year. So like all the insomniac events were still here and all my girlfriends were going and doing Molly. And like, I always drove and I always stayed sober and you're like, smart. I just, I was too are. afraid. I mm-hmm. didn't really want to. And I would, since I was sober, when we would go, I would see like what everyone looked like, mm-hmm. you know, they look crazy. Jaws going. Yeah. Every, yeah. And then, and then I was like shocked because I was there and I'm like, I'm only 17, but I felt pretty wise. I was like, they capped off all the water in the, um, the water fountains at the events. Cause they wanted you to buy water. And like these fucking people are dehydrated on the floor here and they have to like go wait in line mm-hmm. to get water. And it's like $10. And so I was just like at that age, like really scared. I was like, what if I, you know, yeah, you were I being don't know. smart. You want to uh, live. I, I feel like it. I didn't let myself be a kid sometimes. I did end up trying drugs like once I got to college, but even then I was like, like I liked Molly, but I was always scared of weed. Weed fucks me up. I can't do, I can't smoke, you, weed. You smoke weed. I can't do weed. I was going to say. <laughs> that, I mean, that's fine. As long as you know what, like Marty's mm-hmm. never done hard drugs before. Uh huh. Love it. Fuck, it's the coolest thing. Like you're an adult. You never done hard drugs. Fuck yeah. Good shit. Cause you made it through you. You knew what you wanted. You're sitting there. I'll be the designated driver. Fuck that. Look at your jaw. That's mm-hmm. great. I think that's great. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I guess I was always paranoid of dying even from a really young age. I was like, what, good. what if, Should what be. if? Yeah, I was paranoid of having a child. So that Should be. That's why I was most scared of yeah. my whole life. Just trying not to get girls pregnant? Well, uh, where I'm from, the highest teenage pregnancy rate in the country. Oh, wow. So every, like, if you don't have a kid by 16, 17, like, you're not going to have kids? <gasps> like, bitch <laughs> let me graduate first mm-hmm. april's wow. best friend just got pregnant my wife april her best friend she's in her 30s and it's like it seems so long but it's like that's actually kind of how you're supposed to do it wait a little bit let yourself yeah live a little i mean bit. where i live and and i go to like the mommy and me groups with my daughter and she's like 20 months i'm like the youngest mom in the room a lot of times i'm 31 so in some circles, the the women are waiting longer to have kids and they're maybe using IVF or whatever. But in some places, you know, mm-hmm. obviously having a baby at a younger age is more normalized. But I feel like, especially now that I have a kid, 
if I could have gotten pregnant at 50 and lived to be 100, yeah. I would have done it. Uh-huh. Because it is so different and it is so hard. We just went to Tennessee for a week with my daughter and it's supposed to be like a vacation. Yeah, and I feel like I need a vacation yeah. from, from that because mm-hmm. it was exhausting yeah. to do stuff. You're Here's like three. Nothing three will ever be relaxing again. No. Just accept You're that. You're always yeah. going to be worrying about someone other than yourself mm-hmm. forever. You That's know? why I'm afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Be afraid. Wanna, you should be dog. afraid. <laughs> I don't want a pet. Yeah. I don't want anything because yeah. I they know myself. I will go 100% and, like, and then my work lags because I'm mm. not going to put work first. I already know that. Mm-hmm. But I well, love you need work. a good support system for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not ready for that. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to sit here and convince no. you to have kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's amazing that you guys have, that's like a testament coming from where you come from to you and Rosie being together, building up all this stuff and not deliberately not having kids. Is, oh, oh, thanks. Like, Cause me and her are so mean. selfish with our time. We'll but do you s- think it's made you more too paranoid? Like, do you think she's going to get pregnant one day and you're going to be like, Oh, no. I don't know. I don't we're know. S- Take it back. So at this point, I think plan. Yeah, yeah, like, no, give me five years. Cause we're about to buy a house. We're, we always say like, how are we going to buy a house with a pool and there's a bunch of naked bitches out everywhere and we're all doing fucking drugs and doing cool <laughs> stuff? Hold on, my, my kid is inside. Yeah. Uh-huh. I haven't had that time yet. That's I mean, why. if you're still living that life and you're not... No, we don't do drugs and oh, do okay. shit. Okay. I'm just okay. saying, like, say. how, what if... Yeah. Like we want to do that shit. Yeah. Like we're not there there. yet. We haven't got to have a lot of fun yet. Uh-huh. Adam and I like so partied yeah, a ton when we first started dating, so and then at yet. some point we just naturally stopped. Yeah. Honestly, it's like stopped I, caring. Mm-hmm. New Year's of 2018, going into 2019, we like got so fucked up, and we just like it's not like we woke up and decided like we're never going to do this again. We just kind of stopped partying, yeah. and then in. 2019 we like instead of going out for halloween we decided to take his nephews trick-or-treating and we're like what the fuck are we doing we're like already acting like we're parents Mm -hmm. we're not having fun so let's just have a kid already yeah but also i think you you don't have the traditional job you don't have to go i have to go punch in Mm -hmm. so i think taking them on on make or to Mm -hmm. halloween like what a change yeah yeah i'm doing parent shit this is cool yeah i know i've always loved kids i've always worked with kids so for me i was like I always knew I was going to be a mom. It was just a matter of when. And we had bought our house like, you know, I guess July 2019. So by by the time we decided to get pregnant, it was like we had our affairs in order in in a way. You know, we're kind of like this house feels a little empty. Having a kid when you're 20 and broke is so much fun. (laughs) And it's a goddamn tundra blizzard outside. And you got flat tires and shit. And you got to get to work. So just be happy you bypassed all that shit. Marty's that depressing story. I I like don't know you well. So I didn't realize that you were all just projecting. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Marty had kids young as hell. All of them. So that's Marty's Uh, life. Yeah. But like my mom had my sister at 15, 16. Then me at 18. My dad was like 18, Mm -hmm. 19. So I've watched people struggle my whole life and that's what scared me to death yeah were you was, raised by your grandma for sure yeah. yeah i was raised by my grandma too even though my mom had me at 31 it was like you know it's hard like what did you, your parents you, do um uh, my mom was like banker when i was younger and then my dad's an electrician oh okay so, you, so both parents work so you you weren't struggling growing up especially if you lived out here right? um we had like support from my uncle like we lived in a house that was owned by my uncle we never like owned our own house nice. we were like we did we did okay you know i never like was like, yo, you can't have that. But I, I wasn't like balling. Well, I didn't have to, any like super fancy yeah. things. You went to college though. They I went to rent. college, but I went to college with mostly with grants. And I had like maybe $5,000 with the loans oh, when I graduated. Nice. So I was in a way better position than the average person when I graduated. And then I moved back here and I was like driving for Uber while I was studying for the GRE. Took the test, got into USC for grad school. And then was like, okay, this is really expensive and I'm not really sure if I want to do it or if I'm just like kind of following the path that I think people are expecting me to follow because I was like the first in my family to go to college and stuff like that. Mm. And that's when I was like, okay, let's pause. Let's not, you know, take out a hundred thousand dollars with the loans when Mm. we don't have any money. What were you going for? Like what's Jerry? I had my um, undergrad in psych and the the grad school was going to be like a year for industrial and organizational psychology. And it's kind of like psychology of the workplace. You're like trying to figure out how to make the workplace more efficient. Like a lot of human resources type work. So you would have been the human resources person. Yeah, but Mm. it was like, I was picking it not because I was like passionate about it. I don't feel like a lot of people go into psychology and are like, I want to make the workplace more efficient. They mostly Mm. go into it because they want to like help people people and I, I felt like I was kind of like selling out in a way because it's like the field that in psychology that you can kind of make the most money in but I wasn't really sure that I actually wanted it in mm-hmm. the first place but I 
I, I didn't know any other way. Like I always did really well in school and I just mm. progressed and progressed and progressed. And I thought like I would continue with academia and get my PhD and yada, yada, yada. And then I was like, no, 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 I, I don't actually think I want this. I need to like actually stop for a second and figure out what I want to do. Not get all that extra debt. The extra debt, yeah, yeah. the extra work. Mm-hmm. Um, was it actually going to make me happy? I don't know. But so you're happy. Now yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm pretty happy. Listen, <laughs> no, you, the, the question I had was you went up to school up north first and then went back to school down here? You went to school twice? No, I didn't go to school twice. So I went up to, uh, to up to Santa Cruz. I got my undergrad up there and then I moved back here because I was just like, I didn't know what I was going to keep doing in Santa Cruz. I love Santa Cruz. I that, honestly would love to buy a house there. That was my question. It's Santa Cruz, the right? the best fucking place. That's where I went every weekend growing up. Oh, really? My sister moved there. So I, at 18, from 15 to about 22, I was there every weekend. My sister Did you go to the boardwalk? There. Well, my sister, you know Pacific Avenue? Yeah, yeah. You know, Streetlight, that big record company? Yes. Like, that my sister yes. and... I don't know if it's there anymore. Is it still it's, there? It's still there, but I think they're not doing very well. It sucks. Well, I, I was just there with Adam in January. And oh, there's okay. There's a lot of shit. It's closed down. There's a lot. I, yeah. Pacific, my sister used to work at the cookie company right there. Yes, PCC. Yeah. yeah. Oh, damn. You already know what's <laughs> up. Me Pacific all my college friends company. had like nicknames for things. So yeah. I was just to call it PCC. So yeah, Pacific Cookie yeah. Company. And then Streetlight, my sister would work there. So I would go to, um, I would go to the Catalyst all the time oh for God, shows. Yeah. So I lived up there basically every weekend before we could try, we'd all like pitch in and go to Santa Cruz to That's go to the awesome. boardwalk sometimes, but it was mainly just to go to concerts. So I was going to ask, what is your favorite place to go in Santa Cruz? Since you know, what's your favorite chill spot in Santa Cruz? Oh, my favorite chill spot. Like you and your friends all Honestly, got food and you're doing something. I always like going up to campus. I like was on a certain part of campus where you have like a view of the entire city and the the ocean. Well, no, it's like we called it the knoll. It's like overlooking the field, like the um, I haven't been not the soccer field, but like it's where you see the prettiest view, I think. Um, And then I like bookshop Santa Cruz. I like all the local shit there. Like here, I feel like if I want to do something and go to like a nice bookstore, there are nice spots, but they're probably more like out in Silver Lake and stuff. And that Mm -hmm. feels like Silver Lake is Santa Cruz to me. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> the first time I drove there, well, what the fuck is this? Like little bungalows and little tiny houses yeah. on top of each other. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I, I was uh, going to ask. I used to go to the Rivermouth. That's where I used to smoke weed nonstop. Oh, at. okay. You know, right, right where it's uh, you could see the boardwalk to your right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, is oh. Santa Cruz the clothing company? Like, is that from Santa Cruz? Or yeah. Is that just yeah. a coincidence? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Santa Cruz is from there. The O'Neill. O'Neill, O'Neill oh, boy. I know that. Yeah, okay, there's actually a that. lot of companies from out there. I can't think of off the, the top of my head. The owner lived out there too, right? He had the, that, that fat ass house yeah. and the rock lives right there on the sea cliff too. I love my time in Santa Cruz. It's like the best it's time of my the life. Best time. I was so happy to be able to take Parker there. It's so dope, isn't yeah. it? It's just, I love it so much. I like feel very time? cleansed yes. when I come back. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. I don't know um, what it is about Santa Cruz. I love it so much. I always tell you, I love mm-hmm. Santa Cruz. It's not man. like a super small town. There's like 50,000 plus people, but it feels very small town mm-hmm. there. And I, I really like that. Like mm-hmm. I grew up here, but when I went there, I was like, okay, maybe this is more my speed. Yeah. You it's know? like, it's like your, where do you, where do you Irvine? it's like Irvine. It's like yeah. clean, mm-hmm. but it's still a beach. Mm-hmm. Well, Irvine's say. not a beach. More like, I like Big Sur. Big it? Sur is my spot. By your house. Yeah. Whatever's oh, by your house. Uh, Laguna Beach. Laguna That's it. Yeah. Laguna Beach is a very nice area. It's super yeah. nice. But Santa Cruz is a little more like Laguna Beach, and you could probably buy wheat. Yeah, like right it's, it's a hippified version. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. I yeah. like it. They're not. They're no hippies in Laguna Beach. Okay, so question: You go to school up there. You go to school down here. You decide you're not. It's not for you. You're done. I don't go to school down here. I, I apply oh, so and I get in. And I think part of me undergrad. like just wanted to know that I can get into grad school. And I was like, okay, I already did that, but I'm not going to go. Um, oh, I thought. Yeah, I thought that you were going to school actively still down here. No, so no, I, I just got accepted, but I did oh, all the so you process. Went, let me get it. Mm. Ah, fuck you, basically. Yeah, I mean, it was a really hard program to get into. That's so what I'm saying. I was like, you got I just want to know that I can get in. Were your okay, parents tight. pissed? Uh, I don't think they were really pissed because, you know, it was expensive and there was no way that they could help me, and that's like a, uh, a ton of money. So I think they understood like why I didn't pursue it. Yeah. Um, but I think they were confused when I graduated college because, I mean, I went to college in 2009, so right when the recession hit, and then I graduated, and they're kind of like, well, you're the first person in our family to go to college. Like, why don't you have, like, a multi-million dollar job now, you know? Because gotcha. they just didn't really understand. Are you mm-hmm. first generation here? Yeah. Oh, so they automatically think, oh, American dream, you went to fucking yeah. university. you're going to save us all. You went yeah. to college, you uh, know? Are your parents Armenian? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Okay, okay. So you're down here. You decide I'm, that's not for me. What is your next step? You say you start doing, well, you were already doing Uber, you said. Yeah, I was like nannying for some families, doing Uber, um, 
that was pretty much it. Like just, I had, I had like, since I had the psych degree and I'd worked with kids with um, special needs, mostly with autism, I'd like started working with a family and basically like helping their kid, but also watching their kid doing stuff like that. And then when I was there, I mean, I loved it. It was definitely very rewarding work. Like being able to teach a kid who has trouble, like how to ride a bike and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like it really like meant a lot to me, but you know, you're mostly talking to children all day and like, so you don't yeah. feel very stimulated. And I had graduated college. I felt like it left a very stimulating environment. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I don't know, didn't, didn't, didn't feel like I was like going anywhere. So at the time I like just started interning with this company called Arsenic. They like, I don't even Arstic know. TV? Yes. Like, I don't even know how to describe that. like yeah. what they do because also what they've done has changed over the years. But I like knew this model girl and she like took me to the house one day for like an event. And then I was just like, Hey, like, do you guys need any help with anything? Like I'll help. And so I like kind of worked for free for a couple of weeks and they're like, okay, you're good enough. We'll hire you. And so I worked for them and we were basically like helping models blow up through the Snapchat, like girls that would you know, I don't even know what we were doing, but I, I basically did outreach all day to girls and would get them to come to the house and create content. It's like very early Snapchat, very early Instagram. And when I was there, that's when it kind of dawned on me like, okay, well, I, I'm not any less pretty than some of these girls. So why don't I kind of try oh, to do the same thing? Gotcha. And, um, you see the formula. Yeah, exactly. And so by the time that I left there, I had like a good amount of followers and it, I didn't leave until I knew I had like a plan. And back then was when I kept getting questions about like, so do you have a private Snapchat? Cause I had started posting like there back then they were scary to post just photos of me and my bikini on Instagram, because obviously no one that I knew in my personal life was really doing things like that back mm -hmm. then. So it felt very taboo, but I had been doing things like that on my Instagram and that's when people would message me. And so it kind of became like very obvious that if I did decide to leave and make the plunge and make a private Snapchat, that I was going to be making pretty good money and be able to support myself. And that's when I left. And that was my first month. I made like 30 K or whatever. And it was like, it didn't really believe it at that moment. I was like, okay, save all this money because you're never going to be able to have it again. Ah, like, you know, yeah, like, you're just so, you just have a huge scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. It's not like I went and bought a bunch of stuff. I like went and found a place to rent that was like reasonably priced. But then, you know, that was September, 2016. And now it's, you know, mm -hmm. 2022 and I'm still doing it and I'm, I've progressed in it. And also the landscape's changed. There's been different things that have happened that have made it easier to make money. But I, I still am in disbelief and I still don't treat it like, like it can't be taken away from me at any second. Cause I know it can, you know, YouTube, OnlyFans, all these platforms that we all rely on you. I know we share a Instagram getting deleted in yeah. common with each other. So, um, I'm grateful and I'm not like, okay, I'm set. You know, I don't really They're think about it like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. Some people get the first million dollars go, oh, chilling. Yeah, no, but no, no. A million dollars is not a lot, especially when you have California. to pay half of it to the yeah. state. Especially just, just trying to live in California and buy a house in Southern California. A million dollars, you are broke. It's a million crazy. dollars is not a very nice house in Los Angeles. No, I no it's a fixer-upper. You gotta... Yeah, I go to Zillow every day, and <laughs> yeah. a million is nothing out here. It hurts my heart. It hurts my heart. It is really soul. sad. Like, sometimes we want to, like, move and I'm like, well, if we sell our house and move, we're not going to be able to afford the house we want because mm -hmm. just the houses have gone up so much in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, L.A. You're not really rich in L.A. You can like, move somewhere else. Um, so for everyone out there wondering, this is more like I'm thinking more of a fan. Like, if I was a fan, I wanted to ask a question. What is your day, random, a regular day? That has work in it. You know what that I mean? That has work in it. Yeah, because, you know, as a content creator, like, you know what? Today I'm not filming shit. I'm calling my home. I'm going to do something. I'm going to mm -hmm. go watch a movie. I'm going to do something. Because you're working. You could, there is no schedule. Yeah. I mean, when there is, would you try to stick to it? It's damn near impossible, especially when you work with other people. You uh -huh. can't make sure that they're yeah. like you and showed up exactly on fucking time. Not everybody does. So Thanks. what's your day? What on is a work day or non-work day? Work day. What work, is day work day, I usually like? wake up, hang, I'm, I wake up pretty early. So like 6.30, 7. Oh, yeah, because you're an actual I'm a parent. mom. Yeah. So, you know, me and the kid, we hang out. We like play, whatever. I feed a breakfast for a couple hours. Um, I go work out, come back, shower, get in hair and makeup. My least favorite part of the fucking day. I hate sitting there and not actually actively doing anything, but I can't use my hands. I just have to sit there, whatever. Hair and makeup is an essential part of having a set day and then I'll go to the studio house that I bought. Um, and that's where we'll probably shoot like two, maybe three plug talks. And then, you know, watch, take a shower, wash my face, come home and do bedtime. And that's like, Oh, your whole, oh the filming is all day. 
Um, well, it's like a five or six hour day. That's how many, we'll do like two or three plug talks in that much time. But I create my schedule so that I'm always home to do bedtime. No. Oh, and bedtime could, could be like bedtime six. Bedtime is really early. It's okay, like seven, sorry, seven, seven, seven thirty. It's your whole day. No, seven, seven thirty. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, by the time I put her to bed, it's like, I have to go to bed pretty early. Cause I have to wake up really okay, early with her again. So the last couple hours of my day, I'm probably scrolling or doing Legos or trying to read and then keep picking up my phone. Mom life. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think the stigma of like girls that do porn is probably going to change over the next couple of years from where it's like the first, the stigma you'd have of a girl who did porn in the past might be, she got daddy issues, she got problems, uh -huh. she was kind of forced into this. But now it's like maybe moving forward with OnlyFans, it's like college degree. Yeah. I'm doing this because I it's super lucrative. It's a business decision. Yeah, I think you can, you're going to, I mean, you already see it, but you're going to see more and more stories of different types of ways that girls fell into the industry. Because a lot of the girls we interview on Plug Talk, they like started doing traditional porn, but usually they're getting into the industry in one or two ways. It's like they needed money and they started stripping and then they met a guy or a guy got them into it or they needed money. So they sort of started camming and then camming led them into porn. But I think more and more it's going to be like, yeah, I got my law degree and then I decided, fuck this shit. I don't want to read all these books. I feel drained and depressed. I'm gonna do an OnlyFans. I have big tits, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I and I think that like Perfect. people are always like, "How are you gonna explain this to your kid?" I think by the time that my kid is in high school, she might have another kid in her class whose parent has an OnlyFans, you mm, know, hundred percent. I, I and I think maybe, it, maybe it's not OnlyFans anymore, and like mm. probably by the time my kids in high school, like I'm not gonna be doing this shit anymore, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely getting less stigmatized. I, I think, of course. There are people who still see it in a really twisted, old school, medieval way, but um, the the movement is progressing. Where does OnlyFans like? It's an app, right? No, it's not an app. It's not allowed to be in the app store because it has eighteen plus content on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just a website. Does do yeah. do sites like that where the the person can just stream themselves? Do those are those bigger than like regular old school porn sites? I'm actually not sure. I think that because OnlyFans, well, no, it's hard to say. I feel like maybe OnlyFans has more traffic because when you think about it, they have tons of users. I forgot how many users they accrued over the pandemic, but it's like all of these different like influencers and mini influencers are driving all this traffic versus like a traditional porn company has like their email list and their uh, traffic mm -hmm. from however you know maybe two decades that they've What's been the in the industry or whatever it is way. but i feel yeah. like it's got to be more coming from influencers i'm just but i'm just guessing has to be mm -hmm. has to be more right because like if we all drove our traffic to the same website yeah. mm -hmm. but the thing is yeah, like there is no explorer page on OnlyFans, so you can only get discovered oh, on only fans by your by name? someone finding your name like someone in your audience looking me up or That's finding my link strong fan base comes into play yeah but like they have no explorer page oh, is that on, by design because they don't want the like people that don't want to see porn like, on there it's like, well, it isn't like they're like, it's not I think when you sign up as a user who's not creating content, I think that it might like suggest to you some people to follow at the bottom. But as far as I know, like there is no like main page. Trent says it does. Uh, it, it, does. Yeah. it does. It does. <laughs> there. But like, I don't think it's, it's not like with Twitch where I feel like you can click like a category of things you want to watch you and then it'll show you who's uh, doing what, you know what I mean? And I really think part of that person. has to probably be because there's so much 18 plus, like, cause they would mm -hmm. probably only want like the safer work stuff on the front page. And a lot of this is, well, Perfect example. A lot of this is a couple, right? Correct people, like couples on OnlyFans, correct? Like, because you see a girl that's an adult star, mm -hmm. and she's in scenes with different people. Different. Yeah. A lot of the OnlyFans, right? They're with their partner, correct? Making content. I think a a, a, lot, a lot of, of girls it. are you know having sex with random people, but I would I would guess that most people are having sex with the same person, even if they're making it seem like they're not, because it's like you know role plays a common thing, so you can like pretend someone's your Uber driver or your gardener or whatever it is, and make a scene with them, and then they can't see their face, so it doesn't matter. But like it's a lot more practical um, to just have sex with the same person every time, you know. Um, obviously, if you're in the industry and you know a lot of like performers who do professional porn yeah. and you can trust them then it's easy to go work with multiple different people booking somebody booking. as a girl hey oh, yeah i need a dude to have sex with like no no, no stop reward that shit do not say it like yeah, that is exactly. it only live streaming or do you have like a no 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 i've never live streamed on my only fan do you, you create the content and you upload it like you either, uh -huh. either to a feed or you can send it as a message to someone and then they can purchase it in the messages gotcha oh, yeah. okay that and that's where sense. the that's what my friend told me the majority of 
her money is being uh-huh. made in the messages. Private. Yeah, it's like a different model for everyone. I, I feel like mine is equal, like messages sl- slash subscription, but a lot of people will price their OnlyFans as free. So then the only mm. money that they really make is it from is. people purchasing a video individually. Uh. Hey, what's up, guys? Just taking a moment to talk about one of our longtime sponsors, and this is Manscaped. Before we get into it, guys, as always, go to www.manscaped.com forward slash YOLA. That's going to get you 20% off of your entire order plus free shipping. With that being said, let's get straight into this. And what are we getting into? Sweaty Sack Summer. I don't write this, all right? Just want to let you know that is their actual tagline for Manscaped, Sweaty Sack Summer. You guys already know, sweaty balls, not fun. Sweaty balls covered in hair, probably a lot worse. Did you know that Manscaped also also makes boxer briefs. If you didn't know that, go to manscaped.com and check it out. So right now, if you're shocked that we're talking about underwear because you didn't know Manscaped sells underwear, well, here's some more stuff that they sell. They got ball toner, ball deodorant, the 4.0 lawnmower, which is the king of kings. They got the nose hair trimmer, weed whacker. They, there's so much that the list goes on. Everything just boils down to keep that dick clean. Don't be a dirty bitch and go to manscaped.com forward slash YOLO. Use 20% off plus free shipping. So with that vulgarness of an ad read, let's go right back into this whole Wholesome episode. Now, do you have any advanced knowledge on like metaverse, like porn? Not even That's going to be a, a thing. metaverse strip club where tonight uh, I will be <laughs> dancing at so and so strip club in the metaverse. If someone wanted me to do something in the metaverse, I guess I would do it. It's probably going to be a big thing, I guess, if the metaverse gets could you really imagine? big. I could imagine it How being really you cool. Be, you don't even got to go yeah, anywhere? You're going to go anywhere. You'd be at home. Oh, All right. I would hate that. Cool. I feel like those goggles are going to make me car sick. <laughs> they do make me. That's why That's why I don't do it, but I loved VR fighting game. I got so sick. It's not for yeah, me. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I, I would definitely not be able uh-huh. to do it. But that'd be Did you see during the pandemic the, uh, in New York, they had this like glass. They had a bus. One side was glass. They had like four poles and they were strippers and they were driving up to people's houses because you can't have contact. So there was through the glass. So there oh, was a wow. mobile strip club. But how club. do you tip them? With a Venmo through or something? Through the thing in, inside. Oh. So. That's pretty genius. It's pretty genius. <laughs> yeah. So could you imagine going, uh, let's go to Spearmint right now. <laughs> oh, my favorite adult actress is going to be gonna there tonight. Weird with- yes. And you say, a stri- like, say you're at a strip club. A dancer can only really dance on one person. Yeah. With that, it just mm-hmm. connects. Like, oh, you just gave a lap dance to 1,600 people, <laughs> and they all tipped you at once. It's kind of like camming, but it, it probably feels more pleasurable for the and viewer in that. That they can see, and they they yeah. went into a place. And they I feel guess, like they're touching your ass, but they're not. Isn't that insane? There's some sick-ass avatar going, dude. dude. Like, people are going to be fucking living in there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like people close. are going to live in there. It's yeah, I mean, I, I camped life. for a little bit. It wasn't for me, but there was definitely like returning customers who were there every single day, you know, all day long. Like they're there. and Build a relationship with any of these dudes? Like, yo, how's, how's work? Um, yes, to think. some of them, but like to the big tippers who were like consistently in my chat room and were like making my day worth me being online. But that's why I didn't like it because I like efficiency. I want to like make a piece of yeah. content and then sell and it. And then with... with Passive. Yeah, exactly. But with yeah. camming, it was like, it was good because... It's like going to work at that point. It was kind of like fun and social for like the first couple hours. I was like very bubbly, very excited. But then after that, you kind of just like draining Mm -hmm. and like you have to stay on. I mean, I really give it to the Twitch streamers and every cam girl who's on all day and is able to make it fun and exciting for themselves because you have to be performing constantly. Yeah, you're a performer. Yeah. Literally, it's, we call it adult performer. It's, yeah. it's still But even act. for like regular people who are just yeah. streaming video games or whatever, Seriously. it's like you can't oh. just play and be silent. You have nope. to be engaging with your audience. It's cra- uh, I see some of the yeah. setups people have. Amazing. I give it up to them. Mm-hmm. I just tried my Twitch set. It took, a, it took forever. There's so much that goes into this. It's a yeah. full-time job. It doesn't really feel like it's something that's easy for just anyone to go no. into if you want a good setup i feel yeah. like there's so like i'll be like how to do a twitch setup you look it up and then there's like 80 words okay. you don't uh-huh. understand it's so and much like, different than even just yeah. this. i just have a friend come in basically yeah and, and then on top of it you do this big ass setup and now it's like i got a freestyle talk for hours <laughs> that's my easiest thing like freestyle talk how many hours you need yeah. <laughs> everything else i could not set up a twitch stream uh-huh. so are you gonna be doing twitch now yeah I, I have a twitch i just it was so much to, to keep up with i didn't have cool over i just didn't I think it could be better. He's so I was like, let's just wait. Yeah, I bought the whole, the whole thing. Set. And it's just sitting there. It's behind that red curtain. You should, you should sell it as like a Twitch stream. <laughs> Tell us. Oh, we, we are going to do Twitch You streams. are going to do it. Okay, oh, okay. for sure. I'm just, uh, I haven't yeah. set it up fully. We've been working. We've been, got it, got we've been it. doing so much. He's been building stuff. We, 
You got to do like a what? consistent schedule too, because yeah, that's like, like what's every really Wednesday. important. I was thinking because we film on Tuesdays uh, usually. Every Tuesday after the podcast for three hours, I'll mm-hmm. be on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to think of something consistent because we always use a comparison. You know, on Sunday night. Oh, maybe you don't know. Simpsons came on on Sunday night. Did your parents let you watch The Simpsons? Uh, no, I didn't watch I The didn't Simpsons, but so. I know what they are. I, Adam always makes Simpsons references that uh-huh. I don't understand, but I mean, he, he learned a lot from that show. Well, he <laughs> got the tattoo, right? Lisa Simpson, right? Yes, but that tattoo is a tribute a to Lil peep, peep. A little Peep tattoo. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and all the characters. I okay, so <laughs> every Sunday at 8, it comes on. Yeah. All right? So I always uh-huh. thought, like, that's what got me excited. Oh, it's Sunday? Yes, yes. I have something. So for Twitch, I pick a day, like, Oh, what time? What's the day? He's tw- he's streaming tonight. That's yeah. how I want to make. You have it to be feel. a part of someone's routine. I know. Yeah. I'm like sad when I don't have the show that I'm watching. I like mm-hmm. just Euphoria well, was a good one. I would. Euphoria wait for. was actually really fucking it shot really so well. Good. Mm-hmm. It's it shot really good. so yeah, well. It's, amazing. It's, it's everything about it's good. Mm-hmm. Off topic. What shows are you watching currently? If you say you're watching <sighs> stuff, I'm not watching anything right now. I Which I you did. Just oh, actually, I finished Ozark, but I am. Ugh, Adam's like the worst person to watch TV with. Okay. I want to sit there and watch every fucking episode until we finish watching it. And he, first of all, he smokes a blunt before we watch anything. He's so bad at following plot lines. He's like, honestly, I'm not going to lie. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so then we have to like pause and I have to explain it to him or he falls asleep. And so we have to rewatch the oh, episode yeah. again the That's next Rosie, night. And then bro. we don't. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, I'm just going to fucking watch the show without you. But the show we we're trying to watch is The Boys. Are you watching The Boys? Oh, that shit comes on tomorrow. New episode every Friday. I can't fucking I'm wait. like on episode one and a half because of Adam of, of this, which, new oh, this new but season. But I'm so, so fucking good. annoyed. So I have to like go home tonight and maybe try to watch by myself. Literally, I'm just waiting for days to go. So fuck it. Friday comes, I can watch this fucking show. The boys yes. is so damn good. I'm it's stuck on so it. So good. I'm so and this new season. <sighs> Give me the loose. You told me about that one, right? If it's if superheroes, if they were treated that's like right, athletes. That's right. yeah, yeah. If Superman yeah. was LeBron James, mm-hmm. but what do you do behind doors, closed doors? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's and, 2022. There's like you know, there's social media really <sighs> matters. All their social numbers. Yeah, like Marvel movies yeah. are just them on camera. Doing gotcha. a plot yeah, line yeah, yeah. Like about BTS. Yeah, yeah, it's like BTS. Uh-huh. It's really, great, really well great done. Great show, dude. But what about all time favorite? Like all time favorite series? Ooh, wow. top two, three. Oof. Ugh. Gosh, that's tough. I I feel like I would put Euphoria on on it one of those really three. Good. Really, really good. Really engaging. And like, did you watch the whole thing? Yeah, I'm caught. There up. were mo- moments where. I forgot I was watching a show That's and I had me. chills yep. and I was like going to cry fully immersed. and like fully immersed in it. And I felt like yep. I was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's definitely up there. I love that show. All time is tough for me, but succession I'm really into. And Ozark was really good too. He's on Ozark. I yeah. stopped at season two. I haven't, I haven't caught oh, up yet. It's so good. Laura Linney's amazing. No, nah, I'm still, uh, I'm still behind. She, the girl with the curly blonde hair. No, the mom. Oh the yeah. She mom. Oh, the, she's, yeah, she's, she's incredible. Be. Um, but I, I feel like I've been listening to podcasts more. What do you listen to? Than wa- um, do you know Dax Shepard's podcast, Armchair Expert? I haven't watched it, but Dax Shepard's hilarious. Yeah. That fool His from podcast uh, is Let's so Go to good. Prison. I've heard that. Yeah, so I actually, so I was a big New Girl fan, and uh, they did oh, an yeah, episode the, the with Max Greenfield from New Girl, and so that's what got me into the show, and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go back five years and just start from the nice. beginning, and there's so many episodes, so that's why I'm kind of like binging those right now. Nice. Yeah, I, I uh, I'm like you. I'm like, can we just fucking finish yes. this bitch tonight? I'll because stay I'm up. gonna forget what up. happens if I wait too yeah. long, yeah, sure. and then I have to watch those YouTube recap videos. And I, sh- <laughs> yeah. I really respect the people who do those. They yeah. work really hard. They work so hard. <laughs> yeah. Like I was saying, they won't say what it is, uh-huh. but I was watching. There was this YouTuber getting shit on. I go, whoever made the video put so much time and effort <laughs> overlays Into and transitions <laughs> for somebody to hate. Yeah. That's really crazy. And they do yeah. so much research. I'm so like, much God. research. I'm the kind of person who's like really interested and really engaged in a book or a movie or whatever. But if you ask me about it three and a half hours later, I am not going to forget yeah. it. Remember exactly how the story went. And so that's why I really respect people mm-hmm. who are able to connect all the dots and so all the seasons. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Remember share names. Things. Yeah. I'm like, it's oh. hard. People that do movie reviews. I feel like it's they must hard. have been like English majors or something. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't good in school, so mm-hmm. I have no I was good idea. in school and I still can't remember shit. Yeah, I forget everybody's names immediately. Yeah, you do. I remember Walter <laughs> White. That? It's about it. That's yeah, it. I mean, <laughs> as far as TV people, people. Yeah, I life. mean, I'm watching The Boys, but if you ask me the characters' oh, I names, names, I don't fucking yeah. know. Yeah. It's over. Huey. I know yes. it's Huey. Huey. He's, he's, he's he knows different. their names in real life. He knows in the real life I'll know. Yeah, in real life I'll know, but in the show, I couldn't tell you the names of everybody. I know one guy's name is Homelander. Done. That's true. I know that guy's name. Done. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, before I get way off topic, real quick, 
a dude doing OnlyFans. Is that worth it for guys? I've had multiple. I, I answer a lot of my DMs. Uh-huh. And say I'm with. I posted a picture with a certain girl that does only. She's a super popular OnlyFans. She's me and Rosie's friend. Posted an old picture. We were hanging out. And I just got flooded with questions. So one of the questions I got was, as a dude, is it worth getting OnlyFans? Because I know one guy that does OnlyFans. And he crushes that shit. I think it's the one arena where a girl is most likely going to make more. Oh, for sure. But I feel like guys, um, if they have like a good gimmick or like a good hook and uh, they are, you know, a big dick, good looking, good performer, um, and they're able to collaborate with girls who That's what are is, already man. pretty successful, then they could probably be pretty successful. Um, but it's, I feel like it is kind of harder to sell yourself because, and you, you're going to have to be comfortable with having like probably a gay audience. Cause I think a lot I of would the guys, 90% of it would yeah, be. I think a lot of the guys that I know who do have only fans, like those are the people who are messaging them. Those are the For people who are like sure. suggesting content from them. So if you do want to pursue it, like you're going to have to be okay with like chatting with people who are, you know, <laughs> the same sex as you who want your content. Yeah. I mean, that's, I thought 90% of it was, <laughs> I gotta be honest. If you're okay with like just, Waving your dick around on camera, like be okay with whoever's <laughs> looking at it. Right? I'm thinking, like, how does that translate for a dude? Just, oh I, yeah. I'm just thinking, like, what do you do as a guy? Like, it's fuck. funny because, uh, like, you're not really allowed to do this on OnlyFans anymore. Like, you're not allowed to use non-sex objects for penetration, like cucumbers <gasps> and stuff. But like, I did see a while ago. I don't follow a lot of male performers, but I followed one, and I think he was like fucking different fruits. And it like looked really crazy. Oh, yeah! People ask for crazy shit online, man. I think this people like stuff that, that just <laughs> people just like stuff that look visually appealing or like sound visually appealing, like ASMR mm -hmm. and like the way things like you know just entertaining Severe. or satisfying to watch. Yeah. Like, I think that there was a trend with people. I don't know what it's called. Like not splooging. I don't know. Just like sitting on cakes and smashing cakes with their body and stuff like that. Like people watch that. I see that as a waste of food. That's all I see. Yeah, like damn, man. People might think it sounds sexy, but it's, it's icky. Uh, I don't like having food on me. No. Is it weird <laughs> meeting porn fans in real life? Like, um, I'm trying to think of the instances where it happened. I mean, I think people think it's weirder than I think it is. Like I was walking by myself in New York and this guy saw me. He was like, hey, love the plug. He was like, I'm a fan of your content. And then he was like, you're YouTube, like not your porn. And I was like, it's okay. Like you can be a fan of my content. Yeah. I don't want you to sit there and describe to me what I do that you really like, yeah. but you can be a fan and you can yeah. acknowledge that, you know, cause mm -hmm. I'm making the content, I'm putting it out there. Yeah. I, I know why you know me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where yeah. the creep factor comes back though. Yeah. Because you could be a fan yeah. of you and come up and go, I love your stuff. And walk away. Like, yeah. High five. yeah, yeah. Or most, you could be I would a imagine most or dudes you could be like, like "Hey, can I get a hug?" Yeah, and, and hug then a long like, time. Really hug, and you're like, "Ooh, get off me!" I would imagine most dudes are creeps. Like yeah. my mm. perception of dudes are dudes are fucking creeps. So like, I couldn't imagine. No, I feel like I've had really respectful interactions with people for the oh. most part. Um, you know, when you go to the porn conventions and people are drinking and maybe they get a little close and stuff like that, that tends to be a little weird, but it's kind of to be expected in those environments. Like they're very excited to be meeting their favorite actors and actresses. So yeah, sometimes it gets a little heavy. <laughs> so with being in this field, have you, I mean, you kind of touched on that. Have you really seen how vile some of these people can get? Because like you saying on, I don't really like to go through my DMs. Because, um, I mean, it's the internet. It's a faceless yeah. statement. So people get ballsy, I mm -hmm. think. I think the things that, that are the most annoying are, um, like if I'm on my Instagram DMs and I get, I don't want to say this because I'm just going to get a bunch of it once I leave oh. here, is like uh, sending like photos, like, you know, I know if I'm on my OnlyFans and I open a DM, like that's kind of a place where I can expect to see someone's nudity. But when people are just like oh. tweeting it at me or sending it in my Instagram DMs, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not here for this shit, you know? Did you think it was going to work? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, you think I was, like, was going to see your huge cock and be like, oh my God, please come over right now. You know what? My family, who gives a shit about the fam business? <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah. Get over here. Yeah. I don't think those dudes got businesses and families. Yeah, none of them have anything to do. Yeah. Go, you know what? She'll change her life for me. I know she will. That's a crazy and statement. I, I feel like maybe some people get off on like knowing that they're going to like creep you out or freak you out. But I do think oh, that like, yeah. I'm not speaking for everyone. I do think like a lot of girls like might actually want that maybe, or at least they make it seem like they do want that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, but if I, if I say, send me your dick pic, I'm usually saying it on OnlyFans, on not OnlyFans, on like not my Instagram. Twitter, <laughs> on, on my Instagram. Like not where I'm taking pictures of my child. 
and ask you for yeah. a fucking dick pic. Or sometimes people will send you like a, a screenshot from a scene and they're like, do this, do this. They're like very, like some people are very specific about like mm. what position they want and stuff like that. But like all of it is welcome on my OnlyFans because that's just like a place where I can expect to be in the sexual mindset and know what I'm getting there. But when I'm just like scrolling and looking at like <laughs> cake recipes and shit, like yeah. it's a little different. Yeah. I'm on Pinterest mode, not yeah, porn mode. Yeah, exactly. So do you plan on like one day the podcast kind of taking over? Is that like the long term or are you not really thinking that far ahead in terms of like all the different like channels you have going? I think I'm going to drive this bus till the wheels fall off nice. and see where it takes me. I, if I really start to like just not be into it anymore, then I could see myself stopping. But I mean, I, I hope my podcast does really well and uh, I hope to like be getting better as a podcaster. That to me is more like, a fun passion project. Like, let's see where this goes mm -hmm. kind of thing. Cause for a long time I was vlogging on YouTube and I did really like it, but it's, it's kind of harder for me to vlog now. I'm just like at home a lot or mm -hmm. I'm on set. Boom, 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 boom. Your life's full now. And I should try a little harder at vlogging, but I just feel so out of touch with it. So I'm kind of trying to like replace that form of content and like connect with my audience mm -hmm. in this new format. Um, and I do, I, I love listening to podcasts. I do want to get better at it and stuff, but I, and if I could rely on it as like a true um, source of my income in the future, that'd be mm -hmm. great. But like, I've never been able to re rely on YouTube or brands or anything like that just because of the nature of the other work I do. Yeah. But it, I mean, if I could, that'd be great. Mm. No. Yeah, the brand deal has got to be tricky, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, on my mom page, I get some stuff like, you know, some normal shit like hair, mm. hair, yeah. shampoo normal and shit. stuff like that. Yeah. But a lot of times it's like um, sex toy companies or, you know, mm. other porn brands that want so you're just to in a different them. lane She's, yeah. you, you you are basically like no go stay that way because of what you're doing and that's what that's what happens to us too like you say you get deleted every five seconds yeah, yeah yeah even though it shouldn't be that way you know they know what you're doing is you're not posting your content on instagram it's not like you're posting yeah. full nudity on instagram so it should be this way i don't like it when you can do something and you see someone else doing it fine you go what the fuck dude what did i do different dude. Then you just start feeling like, what did I, am I meeting? Yeah, I, I just want the rules to be applied to the everyone. same to mm -hmm. everybody. I don't care if you are like a really well-known name of a YouTuber or a Kardashian or whatever. I want the rules to apply the same to everyone. And I know that's not the world we live in. That's not no. how it works. But God, there, I saw a girl yesterday. She posted like a fully nude video. She's in the bath and she's like bouncing her butt up and down in the bath. And you can, only, you can see her side boob and her full ass. She has no underwear on. Her video has like 8 million views on Instagram yeah, and it just, down. it's just there. It's yep. existing. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I, I have a, I have like selfies that could get deleted. And I'm I, like, bro, I what is so offensive mm -hmm. about Happy my fucking my face? Mom. Happy birthday to my mom. They do this my whole account. Remember? Mm -hmm. oh, so and it, what the fuck? And you get so mad. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Wait, what? He's like, you see your mom's nipples. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't talk about his mom. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like if you're like a true uh, celebrity, I guess. I mean, you get the pass. Shout out to Brittany. I'm so glad that she has the freedom to post on her page as she wants now. But she posts like nudity with like a little tiny fucking emoji, and we're calling it okay. And it's like you just let the rules apply because you you get it. I know you. I see Adam like again. You post another page. Same yeah. with me. Mm -hmm. I have deleted so much. I'm like. I but think you, them, but you, them. You've gone deleted more than anyone I know from what he's told me. It's a real issue. Yeah, we're almost to 30 right now. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's it's crazy. But like you say, fuck it. I'll just keep working. I'll keep doing other things. Like you said, what's going to replace my vlogging? Well, you know what? Let's try podcasting. It's a mm -hmm. passion thing. If it can help me with income, maybe I can rely on it more. Yeah. So you're not just sitting here like, oh, spitball. What's going to work? It's more of like, what can I like? What do I like? And how yeah. can I turn it into something monetary? Something I can make money off of and yeah. be happy to go do. Yeah, because I mean, there's probably like tons of different kinds of YouTube content that I could make that would probably get a lot of views, of but course. I like don't want to do it. Like, you know, a lot of girls will do like sexy clothing hauls and things like that, which I did a little bit back in the day when I first started, but it's like, that doesn't sound like fun to me or like Long stimulating term. enough to me. And so like, that's why I'm just making the content that I want to make, but I'm also in a position where I can make those decisions. You know, like mm -hmm. I, if I decided to stop making content for a couple months, like I'm not going to go broke. I'm going to be fine. But I had to like get there, you know? So of course, how long have you been making content in total? You said 15, 16, right? Uh, since 2016. So yeah, it's like so almost yeah. six years of content, I guess. So it's not overnight. Well, yeah. some people are overnight and then you, I, mean, I feel like a little you. bit overnight back in the day, but like but I kept building and building and building and building. Yeah. And um, so, 
yeah, I'm just going to see where this goes. Honestly, people exactly. are always like, what's your five year plan? And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. I didn't I think I'd still be, mm. be doing this. If you yeah. asked me five years ago, yep. you know, mm. So I don't really have a plan. <laughs> well, you're one of the front runners of making all your money completely off of your personality, off of you and what you can produce, not just, mm -hmm. hey, buy this shirt. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? like It's something that you have to do. That's why you're saying there's not really a schedule. Um, say a work day or like a day off. Yeah. That's what you have to ask. Is it a work day? If it is, uh, how many hours am I putting in today? Yeah. And when you're running your own business and like I said, you run multiple and you just started a new show. And you're a parent. I'm the only one here that's not a parent. Mm -hmm. So all these things on top of that, you guys have another life to take care of. Yeah. But I mean, you have to like, like I said, the support system. It's like, I don't do this shit all on my own. Of course I, I not. like, I have an amazing assistant. I have amazing nanny. Like obviously I have Adam. So I, but I'm able to have those means because of the life because I was able to create for myself. And like, for me, like I, I do enjoy having sex. I do enjoy making the content. But in the beginning I was like, Oh wait, if I make this kind of money, I have the freedom to do what I want with my time and call the shots for myself. And, you know, like I was living the kind of life where I, I didn't have an hour to go to the gym, yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. so part of me just wanted that. Like, I just want to be able to fucking go and put in time in the gym because that is something I enjoy, you mm -hmm. know? So that's really the thing that kind of started this, but I, I really can't believe it's come this far. And obviously Adam, big help for me, but he's pushed me a lot. He pushed me to do the podcast thing. So. Well, good. I mean, your yeah. episode one that you've shown so far. One episode that I've shown and so far, yeah. And you showed three so far. And is it going to be an array of guests? Are you only going for um, people that you know personally, friends? I mean, at first, I'm definitely reaching out to people that I know personally because I don't want to be like, hey, do my podcast that's like, you know, not that well Brand known. New. If you're like, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll reach for the bigger guests as I, as I kind of get there. But I do already like I'm lucky because I know a lot of girls in the industry who are pretty well known and who are down to be on it. But uh, I have Adam's going to be on as a guest, um, and I have a, another a couple of other girls that I'm friends with who are going to be on. But I do want to reach out to more than just the adult yeah. industry. Um, there are some mom influencers I have my eye on that I kind of want to talk to. Yeah, I feel like talking about the mom stuff just comes so much more naturally to me these days because I'm so immersed in it. Well, it's you just know, the phase of your life. Yeah, it's, it's what's going on right now like exactly. right now it's podcasting with us it mm -hmm. used to be just selling packs and maybe it'll be something different yeah yeah we all evolve into certain <laughs> yes, different things exactly. that we like um before we get out of here i want to ask you something we haven't asked this in a fucking while uh -huh. so something we do is called who are you in the 90s and since you are in our age group i'm 30 i'm about to be 33 in a couple months okay. so we're we're right next to each other you're probably gonna know most of these things i that hope we're so ask. i was born in 91 so you're good you're good okay, okay. i think you're gonna get it so basically who were you in the 90s i'm gonna ask you something you pick between the two not on your current self on your 90s self so if you're born you know what i mean you okay. were a kid in the 90s so you have to think of all right little me what would i have done that's what okay but it's like gut answer yeah. yes gut yeah, answer okay. Okay. thank you ideally gut answer okay. usually this stretches into like an hour but i know <laughs> ideally because everybody like adam <laughs> well we went up for 40 minutes yeah. on donkey kong yeah. Yeah, yeah so i have to pee so i'm not gonna do that oh one. no i'll wait we can we can no, take no, a little no, break fine. too no 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 no, no break right. have a momentum going all right here we go yeah. all right here we go so here you in the 90s oh no look no look oh, I thought <laughs> ready vh1 or mtv Ooh, mtv all day right mm -hmm. okay so that's i don't think anybody's ever picked vh1 unless you're over 50. So I mean, I was I was like happy that VH1 had those music videos in the morning. Yeah, it was cool. I like needed something to get ready to, mm -hmm. but like MTV. MTV took over, and the next was on all the other cool stuff. When I was a kid, I got me too. I was hooked. Um, here we go, Adam Sandler or Jim Carrey. Ooh, Adam Sandler. Yes. I feel like I watched. Um, is was a Big Daddy so much? I just was, watched it two days ago. I watched it so much as a kid. And Fifty First Dates. Oh, 50, oh, we've had a long discussion of that comes up every here. episode. Yeah. Real quick, he 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 is just dating a woman. That can't remember him, yes. and she wakes up next to this man every day. Is and that every day? He has is that morally her. okay that they're oh. having a baby? She's waking up pregnant one day. Oh, but they didn't have that in the. In the it show. wasn't because they just fast forward two years. And they have a child on the boat. What was her six month pregnant wake up day like? Wake up six months pregnant and have to get calmed down by this strange stranger. Sorry, we go into detail here. I feel like if he asked her every day if she wanted a kid and she said yes, then morally it's okay. okay I know, but every day she looks down like, yeah. well, what's my options, motherfucker? You got me on a boat? It was just that one day. She had one day to pick. Yeah. Sorry. That's, yeah, we go into 50 first dates heavy that's here. That's a good question. It, all right. All right. Uh, all right here we go. Uh, Tupac, Biggie Smalls. What are you picking as a kid? 
I think Tupac. All right, all right. Because yeah. uh, is it because you're from California and it was on the rate like it's. I think I just more? like probably went on the lyric websites and looked at his lyrics a little oh, longer, okay, so it. I was just like That's more invested. All right. Did you, were you listening to hip hop growing up? Oh yeah, I was like, I, I always tell Adam like, if you ask me about the G Unit era, I can I can ask answer your questions. But if you ask, <laughs> I don't. If when I go on Apple Music and I click like the top, you don't know who's rap, what? I have no idea yeah. who anyone is unless he yeah. tells me. Okay, yeah, that's Marty. Anything back. past two thousand one, he goes. What? He has <laughs> Alzheimer's voice. Yeah. That's how I feel too. Yeah. Like yeah. Expert Marty's level all on everything. And yeah. he's from New York, so he's all about yeah. it. Ready? Oh, step by step or family matters. Ooh. As a kid too, you have to pick. His it's girls like always I, go step by step. I feel I feel like I I only vaguely remember both of those shows. I want to say Family Matters. I, I go Family Matters. Okay. So Urkel was just funny. I mean, everybody at school. Did Urkel? You remember the nineties? Yeah, that's all everybody fucking talked about. That was the me before the memes. It, the clown or Chucky? Ooh, I want to say none because I fucking I hate, hate everything scary. But too. Chucky, I have more memories of being afraid of Chucky. Yeah, I was too. I, I can't. Yeah, I, Thomas is violently afraid of Chucky. I don't, like Chucky. No. I don't want that in my life. I don't life. even like hearing just like the scary music do, 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 over do, do, like do, a, no. a black screen. Like uh -uh, nothing, it's nothing too much. scary. It's too That's, much for me. That knife sound. <laughs> I'm fucking good off that. All right, we go. Pulp Fiction or Forrest Gump? Pulp Fiction. Yeah, as but a kid? I only recently watched it. So Whoa. <laughs> it's such a good movie. There, there's a scene in Pulp Fiction where someone's wearing a UC Santa Cruz shirt. Oh, yeah. yeah, the slugs. Yes, oh, yeah. yeah. So I feel like very connected to. All it. right, yeah, I like yes. that you noticed that. Okay. I know exactly what scenes. Well, Judge they still Volta. sell that shirt at the Bay Tree Bookstore, so that's yeah. why. It's on eBay. Yeah. That's like a collector's item. <laughs> yeah, no, my homie went there too, so I was up there all the time. Here we go, Mario or Donkey Kong? As a kid, I feel like. I feel like I played more Donkey Kong as a kid. Like you I feel and like, Adam. Like I feel like my cousins had that game, and when I was at their house, I was playing because I was young. I didn't really like have video uh -huh. games, but yeah, I think I have more memories. Adam's the only that. person ever yeah. to pick Donkey Kong. Oh really? And you? <laughs> oh. The only two people that has ever That's picked surprising. Not Mario. All right, here we go. McDonald's or Burger King? I know this answer. <laughs> Burger King chicken <gasps> sandwich. What the fuck? Nice. Burger King chicken sandwich. My fat ass wanted that as a kid Wait, so bad. The, the long, long one. one. I was like, that's the biggest that's the one they only got. One I want I, it. Yes. <laughs> I don't, I don't know about this. It's shit. the long it's chicken long, sandwich. So it's like it, you're oh, balling okay. if you can I afford that shit. Yeah, the biggest thing. Yeah, I always thought like, yo, it's the biggest one, right? I can yeah. eat, but split it in half. <laughs> That's what I thought as a kid. That's no what I always way. got. All right, here we go, here we go. Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan? Ooh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. I yeah. think as a kid... Most yeah. most people would. Pick I feel like Michael you Jackson. go to camp and they teach you the Thriller dance and you do everything. Okay, that's true. I feel like I did I very Michael Jackson dance. related mm. things. And the electric slide. Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of just bullshit. culture if you're not like a basketball playing kid, I guess. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Ready, Sunny D or Nesquik with the little rabbit on it. I if you say had to. none, and also both of those gross me out. If I thought about drinking them right oh, now. Oh, right now would be bad. But I'm much more into chocolate milk. So, so as a kid, just mixing that shit, I would put extra chocolate on my shit. It's so annoying to get the powder clumps in your mouth because you couldn't oh, actually for get them. Sure. Yeah. Should we use a whisk? Someone should have told us about whisks I, as a kid. My grandma had one. I never wanted to like t go get this shit. The egg as a kid, everything is a troll. Yeah. Like, oh, more true. shit? No, fuck that. I'll drink the clumps. <laughs> so that's how I thought about it, too. Hey, we got through that. Yeah, Great. Yeah, Good nice. shit. Great fucking nice. good Fastest answers, man. Ever, yeah. Fastest one, for real. Okay. Um, I know you have to go to the bathroom. I know we're going to get you <laughs> out of here. We've been here for quite a while. Hour and a half. So I've been wow. here for a minute. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah, of course. This was fun. I was about to go, hey, Marty, how'd you? Uh -huh. he's used, this is the first setup. He used to be over there. It would have a different tape, which is so odd. This is so much It's so better. much better, man. Yeah, is like, this the first episode you didn't smoke weed on? No. In a while. I didn't even Do you always smoke it. weed? We usually always smoke weed, but I yeah. completely forgot. About I was it, like, honest. honestly, like scared. I was like, fuck, they're going to smoke weed around me. I'm going to get high. No, we always yeah, ask no. that. I, that's when you stand and go, oh, yeah, I'm not going to spark it. We don't box out our guests if they don't. We have to ask okay. usually before. Because Adam doesn't give a fuck. He just lights up around yeah. me, and then I'm at the no jumper offices where everyone smokes, and oh, I'm like, there's up. no fucking windows. I'm like, <laughs> I'm high now. I need to go home. Yeah, see, I don't want to do that to people. With Brian yeah. Callen, we had him come here. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck! I feel a little bit uh, feel a little bit fucked up right now. Yeah. He hit the joint once. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that to people. So I, I like not. Ask. I'm not sure if it's in my head or if I really get it's contact in, it's high. In your head. It no, is. no, you get contact high, but the paranoia is in your head. Yeah, it's just it's just there, and you know, and you're on camera. You're like, did I say something stupid? Yeah, I can't remember if like, I said something stupid. Am I talking stupid. loud enough? Can they hear yeah. me? I am so bad. How do I look? Being high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just start moving and shit. No, yeah, you overthink everything. It's not fun for me. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for coming. Yes, of course. Thank you. First fan ever. You, I mean, the first guest ever. You were here, like. Like, wow! Right on Y'all need to get your shit together. 
It's and, like the oh, influencer, no, just, them, like the influencer <laughs> mindset, like, I can just be late. Yeah. Oh, fine. I hate being late. I can't fucking stand. I'd rather, like, I'd rather have to fill up my gas tank again than be fucking late mm-hmm. to a meeting. Yeah. Like, I'd rather, like, can you give me, like, I'd buy 20 minutes from you right now, please. So once just you have a kid, just know. Oh my you God. might be late sometimes. I know, but that's my excuse. Like, they're like, they're, they shit their diaper. They fucking, you put their shoes on, they just took them right back off. So. My kids are going to hate yeah. leaving the house, though. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be like, oh shit. The Dad already started like, the car. He's going to leave without me. Time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how I'll be. Um, all right, I think we're, I think that's everything, Marty. Everything I wanted to get through. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much for being here. I appreciate yeah, it. Where can everybody find your new show? Uh, it's on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Lana the Plug. Just all one word? Lana the plug, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then on Inst- I mean, what's your new Instagram? Oh, it's okay. You guys can just Google me, but at free Lana the plug. Free, okay. Yeah. So which which number is this? <sighs> it's all they're all out of order because I'll make a new one and I'll get one of them back. And, and then the IP. Yeah. So I had like Lena the it. plug, and now it's free Lena the plug. And then when that one got deleted, I had Lena the plug again. But now Lena the plug again is deleted, and I have free Lena the so plug. Confusing. So just Google, and you know what? Just follow me on Twitter because that's the only place Thank I you. never fucking get so deleted. What's your Twitter? So just at Lena the plug. All one word, guys. All right, on Twitter. Thank you so much for being here, and good luck on your new show. I Thank hope everything goes well. The set looks awesome. Thank you, thank you. That looks really nice. Marty, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being here, guys. guys. This has been the Dope As Usual podcast. I'm Dope As Yola. Have a dope-ass day. What? So yesterday I did an edible challenge. Oh, my God. So I ate like 3,000 milligrams last night. Woke up so violently high this morning. I'm like, no, no, no. She's going to be here in three hours. What did you do? I chugged all this water and this juice. And it helped? It helped so much. Wow. (laughs) I feel okay right now. Edibles are the devil.